Welcome back to the Mount Pleasant Dynasty. Today we return home as we'll be taking on the Troy Trojans. Last week, Mount Pleasant was on the road in Austin, Texas, a game in which they lost 59-7, only 100 yards of total offense in that game. It was just an utter domination on all sides by Texas, and we'll look to rebound and get our first win of the season here at home against Troy, rocking a new uniform combination. Brandon Silvers takes the field. He's now a senior. He lit us up last year. He did not throw an incompletion of that game until the second half. Nearly set the completion record, and he already gets his first incompletion out of the way on the very first play in this year's game. Silvers moving in the pocket. He's going to go down. However, there is a flag down on the play. It is a personal foul face mask, so the sack is negated, and it's an automatic first down for Troy. Troy starting right guard is out for the season and a true freshman replaces him, but it's Jacobs into the open field. He's inside of the 10, being chased and brought down to the two yard line by Markel Reyes. That's a huge missed opportunity and now Silvers will take it in from three yards out to give Troy an early seven nothing lead, only took him 30 seconds. Arkansas State, probably the most talented team in the Sun Belt loses to Alabama, who's now 4-0 on the season. An early third down, Jonathan Gibbs across the middle, and Allen Harrison just able to pick up the first down on his first catch. First down and 10 will run the triple option. Gibbs tries to stretch it outside and is put down after an eight yard run. Three wide set on second down and two, and getting blown up in the backfield, it's Elton Huff for a loss of three. Bridges on the tackle. Third down and six once again, and Gibbs, no one gets open, so he's sacked a loss of six, and that'll be a punt for Mount Pleasant. Troy got a lot of pressure in last year's game, and we have to do a better job of protecting Jonathan Gibbs this year. DeVaris McCormick has the 11-yard reception for the first. It's now third down and fourth throw outside to Hill. He breaks one tackle and is brought down. It'll be a loss of six, so it'll be a forced punt by our defense. We only forced one punt last week, and now a throw outside, the defender bites too early, and that allows Harrison to pick up 20 yards. First down and two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. We go back to Allen Harrison. He's been quiet in the first three games, really trying to get him involved early on in today's game. Quads to the right on first down and 10. Another quick throw and another one goes to Allen Harrison, this time for six yards. Second down and four. Throw outside, we're gonna go back his way once more. That's already his fifth catch of this first quarter. He's been very effective for 58 yards. Third down and eight, we should watch for Allen Harrison, and that's exactly who Jonathan Gibbs goes to. Like I said, really trying to get him involved. Already 70 yards in this first quarter with six catches. Throw across the middle, and Weatherspoon lays out to knock the ball away, and will be forced to kick the field goal. First down and 10 going deep and Thompson goes up and high points the football, breaks a tackle and is brought down by Red at the six yard line, a 69 yard reception. Jordan Chun up the middle and he gets in. It only takes nine seconds for Troy to answer our scoring drive. It'll be first down and 10 will go play action throw and it's Kenton Watkins he's got it for an 18 yard catch second down and four twin tight end look from the pistol throw and it's incomplete and intended for Dorian Mays great job by the defender to jar it free running the triple option once again Gibbs will just keep it and he's able to pick up the first down does not pitch it make sure he gets it and doesn't fumble the ball away another first down and 10 and another good amount of pressure this was a big problem last year. It was Joel Statham who had four or five sacks against us. And now this year we've had at least three or four so far in this first half. There's a loss of three. So it's another stop for the Troy defense. Jordan Chun though is blown up in the backfield by John Paul Cutler. That's his second tackle for loss on the day. Second down and 13 Silvers will take off. Gets a good block and has 10 yards on the carry. So that'll set up third down and short. They go read option on third down and it's a first down and a lot more as that's a great block on the outside by the wide receiver as Silvers is sprung loose for a 21 yard run. 
Now from the pocket, he'll throw outside. He's got Jordan Chun tight roping the sideline and is just shy of that first down marker. Second down in inches, they go draw play. They're a very balanced offense. Jordan Chun is a very talented senior running back. They'll go play action this time. And Silvers throws a wide open man. It's Thompson once again. This time wide open for the catch. Bring a blitz on third down and three. The backup running back Anderson is in. He's able to pick up the first down. And it'll be goal to go for the Troy Trojans. Now after a false start, it's second down and goal. Anderson gets the carry. He's got six yards. And they have it now inside of the five yard line. Third down and goal. We bring the blitz. And the read option works perfectly. Silvers takes it in. And it's now 21 to three. This game is getting out of hand in this first half. Quads on third down and 10, and it is Robbie Golden, a 16-yard reception for the redshirt freshman wide receiver. Now the senior running back gets it. It's Elton Huff who picks up five yards. It'll be second down and around five. On second down and five, fake screen quick fire to the outside. It's McCall who's wide open, can't make the defender miss, so it only ends up as a 14-yard reception. Now a quick strike outside. It's caught by Harrison. He's got it for 12 yards. He's been a little more quiet in the second quarter, but there's a catch right there. Now it's Robbie Golden outside. Can't get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. Third down and six play action with a twin tight end look and another sack rolling right into the pressure. That's McGee's second on the day, so we'll kick the field goal and head into halftime 21-6. Got to play better. Allen Harrison had nine catches for 93 yards in that first half, but the real story was how effective Troy's offense was, especially making big plays. Our offense opens the half with the ball. Elton Huff has a big hole to run through and is able to run for 12 yards. We had negative three yards rushing in that first half and already outgained that on the first run of the second. Steve Lewis gets the pitch and has five yards. So we have it second down and five, a heavy set. Mike Meadows gets the carry. He trucks through a defender and picks up 10 yards along with the first down. Watkins and Harrison split out wide to the left. We'll pitch it to Huff. He tries to stretch it to the outside and is able to convert for the first. Another heavy set really trying to overwhelm this Troy defense as it's an eight yard run for Jonathan Gibbs. Doing a much better job in the second half of running the football. Now a quick bubble screen outside to Kenton Watkins. He gets the first down, a number of first downs so far in this drive. Two backs in the backfield throw, and Harrison drops it. That would have been a big conversion. Instead, it'll be third down and eight, a three-wide set from the pistol. Throw, it's intercepted by Harris, trying to force it into Allen Harrison, and it's taken away for the first turner on the day by either team. With the ball at the 20 yard line, it is third down and eight. Pressure begins to get there, but it's Jacobs down the seam. He's got it inside a demon territory for a 40 yard reception. Third down and eight once again. Silvers moves in the pocket, fires outside, and a lob works perfectly to Jacobs. This one for 14 yards. Anderson will check back into the ball game, and it's TJ Hines, the true freshman defensive end, blowing it up in the backfield. He's the backup right end and stays on the field for third down and 10. It's Douglas on the catch. He bounces off a tackler and they do convert for a 16 yard pickup. Goal to go from the two yard line. A goal line stand would be huge on this drive and the ball comes out, but Douglas is able to fall on it. It's another first fum forced fumble that we're not able to recover. Third down and goal, throw Hill. It's knocked out by Xavier Simmons. And that will be a forced field goal. A great job by our defense, but it is now a three-score game. We're going to throw it deep. We got a man. It's Harrison. The shoestring tackle prevents him from scoring, but it will be first down and 10. Gibbs has it. He's still going inside of the five, breaks a tackle, and scores from 22 yards out. It only takes us 30 seconds to answer, but now our defense has to go right back onto the field. We've had trouble stopping their offense all day and coming out of nowhere is Markel Reyes to deflect the football. 
will bring four on third down and 13 and rolling right into Xavier Burns is Silvers that's his second sack on the day after a false start looking to set up the bubble screen and Gibbs just doesn't throw the ball so we will head to the fourth quarter it's second down and 21 we're down by 11 now third down and 23 throw outside for Harrison he's got it for 17 but not enough for the first down our offense stays on the field getting aggressive throw outside for Harrison once again he makes the move he's into the open field he's gonna score on fourth down Allen Harrison takes it all the way and it's now a five-point game we'll get a second look at this play just a great juke move and the defender falls over himself and he's able to score so our offense stays on the field for a two-point conversion and another athletic defensive play both defensive look very athletic in today's game so it will stay a five-point ball game Jacobs has the catch as now 281 passing yards for Brandon Silvers four wide sets with trips to the right it is Thompson on the catch he's got the first down a 15-yard pickup third down and two they run the read option and Silvers is able to secure the first down on the seven yard run. Now second down and seven, Silvers moves in the pocket, throws back, it's Hill on the catch and he powers his way forward for the first down. It's first down, a throw outside for McCormick and the Trojans pick up 15 yards, it'll be goal to go. A heavy goal line set from both teams and the power from Troy is able to punch it in from three yards out to extend the lead back to 12. First down and 10, Eldon Huff gets the carry. He finds a hole to run through and it secures seven yards. Trips to the left on second down and three. Gibbs goes play action. He's got Kenton Watkins for 12 yards as we pass 350 yards on offense today. Third down and 10. We're going to go deep. There's a man, and it's deflected. Jalen Harris on the coverage. He had the interception earlier, so he'll be forced to punt the ball away. Four minutes left in the ball game. Chun gets it on the draw and is able to pick up eight yards. Jordan Chun has 10 carries for only 18 yards. We've done a great job stopping the run. And just as I say that, it's a big gain here as he nearly gains his total yardage on the day on that single run. Now it's Silvers on the read option. Burns dies and can't make the tackle. It's Nathan Johnson and Lamont Dowdle chasing him down, but he picks up 31 yards. Great run from Brandon Silvers. It's Chun on the carry and nowhere to go. John Paul Cutler once again in the backfield. His third tackle for loss. Second down and 11 for Hill. He's got the reception, a 16-yard catch. It's third down and goal. Under three minutes left in the game. Dumped down to Jacobs, and a couple of demon tacklers come and stop him short. With only two minutes left, we need two touchdowns and a two-point conversion, but going backwards, it's another sack on Jonathan Gibbs. Third down and 17, just throwing it deep, hoping for something, and he gets it. Allen Harrison, 247 yards on the day, along with 14 receptions. That's by far a new school record. Once again, though, the pressure gets there. We have not done a good job of protecting Jonathan Gibbs in today's game. So fourth down and 19, throw outside. It's Harrison again. This time for 30 yards, he nears 300 yards receiving. A dump down, he's going to pass 300 yards receiving on that catch right there. That one goes for 13. Only one timeout left. Throw, Robbie Golden in the back of the end zone for the nine-yard touchdown. And now we're going to go for two. So trips to the left for the two-point conversion. Throw and Dorian Mays, a contested catch. So the onside kick is here. It's do or die. It's recovered by Troy. And that will do it with only one timeout left. Troy can just run out the rest of the clock and secure another victory for them. Brandon Silvers absolutely dominates us once again this year. 347 yards through the air a great day a long great day for Jonathan Gibbs he couldn't really stay up our offensive line really struggled but 17 catches 289 yards receiving he actually didn't break 300 
but an all-time performance from Alan Harrison in that game. Just absolutely dominant on short routes, intermediate, and the deep routes. Every phase of the game, he played very well. Only 49 yards on the ground, though. A lot of that was negated by the sacks on Jonathan Gibbs. Next week, though, we'll be taking on the 1-2 and two Georgia State Panthers. This is a very winnable game and really a must-win game. We're 0-4 at this point. A very interesting start to the season for Georgia State. They lost to Air Force, lost to an FCS team, and then followed it up by beating Georgia Tech. So that's very just a weird way to start the season. However, their starting quarterback, Connor Manning, will not be playing. He is out for, I believe that said, four weeks. So we will not be seeing him. Instead, we'll be seeing the backup quarterback, Jaquez Parks. He's the better runner out of the two, but not by a whole lot and definitely not nearly as good of a passer as Connor Manning. So Alan Harrison now leads the FBS in receiving yards after today's game with 360. Most of that did come in that game against Troy, so really can show you what one big game can do. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, please leave a like down below. Leave your comments on the game down below. I will see you for week five in the next couple of days against Georgia State. Cause I'm out.